enough vacation, but how to continue? Well, on the easy topic of course, failover clustering. Hello friends, this is Nick from NLB Solutions and today I'm going to continue my hot topic on Windows Server 2016 with one of the um, interesting parts of the Windows Server administration and configuration and this is the failover clustering. As you all know, failover clustering is not a new feature. It's been around for ages now and uh, it's pretty much still being used heavily in a lot of corporations, a lot of uh, big industries that uh, want high availability and uh, want their data to be uh, preserved from any unexpected failures. So this is a thing I just want to touch here um, in my next video. Of course, this is going to be some uh, high view touch of the failover clustering feature because uh, um, failover clustering in general is a huge, huge topic and I need to spend a lot of hours on this to try to explain to everyone. But in general, I just want to create a video where I want to show you how you can build a uh, failover cluster uh, that we are going to, um, to make a share highly available. And of course, if the video is too long, I will try to make it in two parts. Hopefully not, and we can, uh, we can uh, make it into a single video. So um, for this uh, video, I will need to have uh, four running servers. The first one is my domain controller that I'm going to be using uh, for um, creating the uh, cluster object and uh, pretty much joining my member servers to my domain. Of course, I'm going to have a client machine that I'm going to test uh, the functionality of the failover cluster. Um, of course, I have a storage server and on this storage server, I'm going to create the storage, the shared storage that I'm going to present on my two nodes because I'm going to build a two node failover cluster. And just to make things simpler for you so you can um, um, monitor how things are going and keep track of things. I've uh, enabled the BG info uh, on the top right side of the screen where you can, if, if you get confused, you can just look into the host name and uh, NLB store 01 is my storage server, of course NLB node 01 is my first node and NLB uh, node 02 is my second node. Um, on my client virtual machine I've uh, I did not add the BG info, but this is going to be used only to test and confirm that the failover cluster is working properly. So if you were watching my previous videos, I've configured the storage spaces feature on one of my storage servers. In there I've configured few few uh, disks to make the uh, storage pool and then make this storage pool highly available. Of course you can um, click back and just uh, check the video as well, but for this one I'm just going to proceed by installing the iSCSI target server role on this server. Of course, you can combine the iSCSI target role with storage spaces so you can make your uh, SCSI uh, targets uh, highly available, of course, and uh, fault tolerant. But for this one, I'm just going to start by installing the iSCSI feature on my NLB store 01 and I'm going to add roles and features choose the storage server and if you click on the file and storage services, expand the file and iSCSI services and enable the um, iSCSI target server, this should be enough for the purpose of this video. So I'm going to install the role, pause the video and continue when this is done. Now that the uh, role successfully finished installing, I'm going to close this window, go to tools and uh, or not the tools, but on the left side, file and storage services and go to iSCSI. In there you have uh, the option to create iSCSI virtual disks. So I'm going to create an iSCSI virtual disk. I'm going to select my C partition. This is the only partition that I have. But of course, if you remember on the storage spaces, you can create a storage pool, then create a virtual disk on this storage pool. And of course, you can use this virtual disk to store your iSCSI targets on it. 
So I'm going to select this one and I'm going to name it. Uh, this is the iSCSI uh, virtual disk name and I'm going to name it iSCSI disk one. I'm going to click next. The size of the disk is going to be five gigabytes. Of course, you have uh, the option to create fixed size or dynamically expanding or, or differencing. I'm going to just click fixed size and click next. Here, I will need to create uh, the new iSCSI target and, of course, uh, add the, initi the initiator IDs so that the initiators, which are going to be my node servers, can connect to this iSCSI target. So, the iSCSI target is going to be named NOB Store 01, like the name of the server. And in here, I need to add the iSCSI initiators. These are the nodes of my future failover cluster. So what I'm going to do is uh, you have several options. You can add the computer names in here. You can choose uh, IQNs, DNS names, IP addresses, MAC addresses. I'm going to choose IP address because this is going to be easier for me. So the first uh, IP address for my um, first node is 10.0.0.3. I'm going to click OK. And the second IP address is 10.0.0.4. Okay, so these are the two nodes of my fail future failover cluster. I'm going to click next. Here you can configure uh, authentication if you want for the initiators to uh, make a secure connection to the iSCSI target. I'm just going to leave this blank for now for this purpose and here you have the summary uh, and the confirmation of what you are going to configure. So I'm going to create the disk and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pause the video, create two more disks with the same parameters and we can continue from there so we can keep this short. Just before I continue with the next steps of my video, I just want to show you how you can configure the next uh, iSCSI virtual disks. You can see that I don't have to every time to choose the um, iSCSI target information. Instead, uh, I have this already saved and the only thing I need to do is just select this and click next and then create the, uh, the disk that I want to configure. And if you were wondering how the iSCSI virtual disks looks like, um, when I go to the iSCSI disks, you can see that it's uh, pretty much a hard disk image file. And uh, the hard disk, depending on what you configure, fixed size or dynamic size, it will have the size that you specified. So now that I already have my three um, virtual iSCSI disks, uh, what I need to do next is I need to connect these virtual disks to my nodes, uh, which are going to become failover cluster, and these are the disks that are going to be used as the um, storage, the shared storage. So the first thing I'm going to switch to my NLB node 01, keep track of the of the name, and what I need to do is I need to go to my server manager. Let's minimize this and open tools, iSCSI initiator. And the first thing is going to say that the iSCSI service is not running. So we need to start this. Click yes to this message. And uh, the small iSCSI initiator uh, window should appear on your screen. So um, when you go and what you want to do here basically is you want to find and connect the um, iSCSI target server that I've configured on my storage server. So you have few options to, uh, so that you can configure this. The first one is you can just add the IP address or the DNS name right here uh, or go to the targets and just add the target name in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the discovery portal and I'm going, going to specify the IP address of my storage server which is 10.0.0.2 and click OK. And you can see straight away that um, it's being added to the um, target portals. So ra right now under the targets, I have inactive um, the IQN number of my uh, storage number target, which is the target that I want to take the iSCSI virtual disks and connect, the, connect them to this server. The next step that I want to do is I want to connect the um, 
the, the, the target and the initiator to the target. And of course you have a lot of options right here. I haven't configured the multipad, but this is pretty much a, a good thing and a really, really great feature to have. Uh, so you can have multiple paths to the storage, so you can have better performance and uh, redundancy if something happens. But uh, in the future I can make a video. I think this is going to be a more advanced video on this topic. So I'm going to click OK. And now you can see that this is uh, connected straight away. The same, I'm going to repeat the steps on my uh, NLB uh, Note 02. So I'm going to pause the video until this is done. So you can see that I've already connected my Note 02 to the um, iSCSI target that I've configured. So the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to switch to my first note. I'm going to close this window for now and I'm going to open disk management and in the disk management if I expand this you will see that I have available a three offline disks. These are the disks that are store, stored on my storage server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the disks online and I'm going to initialize them as a uh, master boot, boot with master boot record but of course you can um, initialize with GPT so okay so after this is done I'm going to configure a simple volume on every single disk and I'm going to leave them um, or maybe label them with uh, data leave the NTFS, leave the default allocation size and click finish wait for the uh, formatting to finish and make the second disk as well so I'm going to make this data 2 finish let's see what is making issues I guess I will need to wait for the uh, formatting to finish properly before I continue with the next disk. So uh, yeah, data tree and finish. So the three partitions are now available under my server. I will just close these windows. They are really annoying. Not sure why they are there. So when I go to this PC, you will see that I have the three volumes already configured and available on my Note 1 server. You can see right here. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to switch to my Note 2. And instead of doing the same thing, I'm just going to open the disk management and bring the, uh, the disks online and not creating a volume on, a volume on them. So I'm going to just expand this a bit and just bring them online. The, the console is not up to date, so let me just refresh. A lot of errors right here, not sure what's going on, but I, I guess this is, this is okay to see. You can see right away that uh, it's saying that there is uh, currently volume created on them. So I'm just going to bring them online. Okay, and you can see right here as well, if I go to this PC, the disks are available right now. So there you go, I've configured my uh, shared storage. So the next step that I want to do is I want to install the failover clustering feature on both nodes. To do this, I'm going to uh, click on add roles and features, click on this one, go to the features tab, and select failover clustering. Add all the additional snap-ins and features and click install. I'm going to switch to my second node and do the same here. Add roles and features. Next, next. Of course, you can do um, the installation remotely using PowerShell or using the server manager console. It's up to you. Um, I have the um, the virtual machines right next to each other with RDP on them so it's really easy for me to install the feature uh, separately. So I'm going to um, 
pause, pause the video and when the failover clustering is uh, finished we're going to proceed with creating the failover cluster. So, after a short break and a small cup of coffee, uh, my installation is finished and I can continue by closing this window. And the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to open the failover cluster manager. And in there, the first thing that you want to do before building a cluster, you need to validate the configuration. Of course, this is an important step because if you have any errors, you need to fix them before you create the cluster or after you create the cluster, if you validate the cluster and you have errors, Microsoft are pretty much going to say that this is an unsupported configuration and they are going to refuse any system with your uh, cluster if you have any problems. So the wizard, I'm going to uh, add my two nodes, NLB node, I'm going to add the two nodes for validation. Okay, the two nodes are here. I'm going to click next. And you can see that uh, you have two options right here. To run all tests, which is recommended, or run only tests I select. Of course, you can select to run tests for storage, for networking, a lot of things for you to do. But I'm going to run all tests for now. And this is going to show you the, uh, the test that is going to perform. And I'm going to click next and the wizard is going to go through the cluster and uh, check if my nodes are properly configured to for me to create the cluster. So I'm going to pause the video and continue when this is done. One other thing to mention during the, uh, the tests I noticed and this is an important thing while the storage tests are going to run and after you've configured properly uh, your failover cluster if you run tests, validation tests on the cluster, it's going to take your disks offline. So if you're doing this in production during uh, business hours, ding, 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 remember, it's going to the disks, take the disks offline. So you will have downtime. So be prepared for that. So now that my validation finished, I'm going to see that I have some warnings. I don't have any serious errors, but there are warning presence, uh, present. So uh, if you click on view report, it should generate a pretty much huge report describing every single problem and how to resolve it. So um, you can see the warnings. Uh, it's uh, reachable from node, but the only pair of network, uh, one pair of network interfaces. This is a, a known warning for uh, you users that you've worked with failover clustering. Uh, you need to have two uh, network cards in order for this warning to be um, passed successfully because uh, one of the network cards should be dedicated for failover clustering and the other should be um, dedicated uh, for your client access so in my case for this test purposes i only have one uh, network card available on my nodes so i'm going to uh, skip this and this is going to be okay for testing purposes but if you are building this on um, production environment of course you need to um, to check this and fix this warning message of course there it is network configuration there you, s you can see um, it's going to advise you what are the uh, fixes that you need to do prior to um, configuring your cluster so remember Microsoft will not support configuration that is uh, that has warnings uh, through the validation and the first step that they want to see is this validation being passed before they even proceed checking your uh, cluster configuration so i'm going to create the cluster using the create cluster wizard and i'm going to add my two nodes one and two of course uh, you saw on the validate validation page there was a tick box saying create a cluster using the validated node so you can go from there of course so the cluster name i'm going to create nlb cluster 01 and on the networks you need to assign a network address for your cluster so for my cluster i'm going to specify the network address 200 because i know that this uh, network address is currently available on my network so i'm going to click next
Okay, and I'm going to remove the tick box to add eligible storage to the cluster because I want to do this manually. This is going to automatically add this, the available storage and I don't want this to be the case in here. So I'm going to click next and it's going to start creating the cluster. It's going to create the cluster um, uh, virtual object in my Active Directory. So I'm going to pause the video once again and continue when this is done. So the wizard finished um, creating my cluster but with a warning saying that it was not able to find an appropriate disk to create a disk witness. And of course if you are familiar with uh, failover clustering you have different modes of failover clustering. Witness, only node uh, availability. So you need to check and configure the proper uh, witness for your environment. Is it a share witness or a disk witness? In my case I'm just going to add a disk as a uh, witness so it can keep my failover clustering up and running. But there are multiple scenarios where you want to choose uh, different options. Is it a node majority? Is it a shared uh, witness? So I'm going to click finish on this one. Now that uh, the wizard is closed, I'm going to proceed by opening the um, the tile on the left side and you can see that we have multiple things that we can configure with our failover cluster. You can see that uh, there is information about the cluster, you can validate the cluster, add nodes, configure roles and so on and so on. The first thing that I want to do as I said I haven't added any disks to the failover cluster so if I go to disks you can see that I don't have any. If I click on add disk you can manually configure the disks that uh, you want to add to your failover cluster. Of course for my purposes I have three available disks that I can add so I'm going to add them but uh, depending on your scenario you may need to deselect any of the disks maybe add one or two or depending on your scenario it can be different. So I'm going to click OK and it's going to add the disks into the uh, failover cluster manager console and they will be uh, available for me to use. So now that I have all of my cluster disks available and they are online as you can see what I need to do next is I need to add a role to my cluster and this role uh, is going to be the uh, file server role that uh, I've mentioned before because um, I want to make uh, a highly available share. What this means is that if a user for example is connected to the share and something happens to one of the nodes in my uh, failover cluster configuration the other node will pick the, um, the share disks and the shares in general and there will be no downtime for the users that are using these shares which is a cool feature. Of course you can see that we have a lot of roles depending on your scenario you can configure DFS namespace, DHCP server or virtual machine um, failover cluster. We can do this in, in the future of course. But for this one I'm going to select the file server role And straight away you can see that it's saying that I haven't installed the file services on this on my two nodes in general. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly install the roles and there then we can try again to configure the uh, file server uh, failover cluster. So in order for me to install the file server role I will open the server manager, click manage, next, next, select the first node click next and open the file and storage services, open the file uh, and iSCSI services, select the file server and click next, next and install. I'm going to do the same on my second node from here. As I mentioned before you can do this remotely to servers which is a great feature. You can use PowerShell as well if you're uh, okay with PowerShell. So. I'm going to select this feature, click next, next and install as well and I'm going to monitor the process and then try to add the uh, file services uh, role under my failover cluster. Now that in the installation finished successfully I'm going to close both windows, return to my uh, failover uh, cluster manager and configure a role, click next, file server, this time I don't see the error message which is nice. So I'm going to click next. 
and you can see that you have two options in there you have uh, the option to create a file server for general use which you can configure uh, with shares that users will access or you can configure the scale out file server for application data and what this means is in the uh, classic failover cluster model uh, only one of the nodes can uh, work to um, to provide access to, the, to your clients and this is normal behavior because one of the servers needs to have access to the storage and if both servers in the past of course if both servers were accessing the, the storage at the same time this uh, was known as a split brain, brain situation and it was not a good behavior to see what uh, Microsoft implemented in 2012, uh, I'm not sure if it's 2012 or R2, is the scale-out file server which allows the two nodes to uh, operate simultaneously and the clients can connect with the two uh, nodes available at the same time, which is a great thing to see. I'm going to choose the uh, file server for general use this time and I'm going to click next and I need to specify a name for the... Uh, for the um, file uh, server uh, role that I'm going to install on my failover cluster. So I'm going to specify NLB FS and I need to specify an IP address as well. So I'm going to specify the address 220 and click next and most of the people when they are watching my videos they ask me where do I pick these addresses. I have a network that I've designed for the testing environment and this network is a plain simple 24 bit you can see right here and the addresses that I'm choosing are random addresses that I know that are not being used by any other servers or applications or any other services in general. So I'm going to click next. And in here um, you can see that I can select one of the three disks as a shared storage that is going to be made highly available. So I'm going to select cluster disk 2 and I'm going to click next and I can click next and it's going to configure my um, file server to be highly available. So I'm going to click finish to this wizard and 